recording. Number two. Okay. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala sayyidina wa nabiyina Muhammadin wa ala alihi al-tayyibin al-tahirin. Wa la'natu al-daim al-abadiyya ala adaihim ajma'in ila qiyami yawm al-deen. So inshallah this is going to be our lesson, uh, lesson two. Basically the first was introduction. Um, we were mentioning uh, the, 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 how to borrow money from the bank or like mortgage or like in car on installments. So as we mentioned that there are two directions. Let me see if I can show you the, uh, the previous, yes, this one. So we have three types of uh, financial institutes uh, because it is very important to understand. Uh, we have one is the private bank or uh, which the investors are private sector not governmental. So these are private people. These are the owners. So you can easily deal with them. Number two is governmental bank. That means we don't know. Government represents the community. Who, which community, whose community, whose money is there, we don't know. So it's, it's, it's considered in, in, a, in a religious technical term, something which is majhul al-malik, unknown owner. How to deal with it? And the third one is the uh, combined investment, like uh, uh, governmental plus private. There's a fourth also, we are going to take it later. It is non-Muslim banks. So the easiest part, easiest method is uh, governmental banks and non-Muslim banks, banks owned by non-Muslim investors. Majority, if there is one Muslim inside, we don't know about it, that's fine. But majority, the investors are uh, either private or either governmental, either either non-Muslim countries. Government establishes this bank, national bank of some country, for example, non-Muslim country, or private bank uh, like Chase in the United States, for example. So, so, so we have these four categories. Category number one is the worst kind of category. So many things to do, which is private. And luckily, Rarely we have private banks, okay? Like for example, I said Habib Bank. Before it was, before it was nationalized in Pakistan, it was. Now it, there is another Habib Bank, AG Zurich, which is, I was told that it is a private, uh, a private uh, offshoot of Habib Bank, which was nationalized. So the same Habib family, they wanted to have their private thing. Now God knows best, you can know, find out this. So this is an example I'm giving, if this is correct that Habibs, they made their own private institute as Habib Bank AG Zurich. And Habib Bank, uh, the Habib Bank original was nationalized. So it became a national bank of Pakistan or a governmental bank. So this is an example of how we have governmental bank or we have combi combo governmental with private and we have private, this is Muslim. And then we have non-Muslim. Non-Muslim, easily you can get loan. I'm going to mention still there is there are some technical things we need to observe. 
governmental banks in Muslim countries, easily. No, uh, the combo governmental bank, easily. The most, from last week, we were mentioned, uh, mentioning the methodologies of justification of the loan is all for this first section, private which is not that much practical, but let's, let's say you want to take loan from a uh, private bank like Habib Bank, AZ Zurich, or some of those, those um, Persian Gulf Shiuks. Uh, they have opened uh, some banks or some rich people in Malaysia. They have opened their private bank. So there are rich Muslims around the Mus in the Muslim countries. They have managed to open a uh, private bank. Investors are all Muslim or majority of them are Muslim. So that is the, the problem. So we were mentioning last week methodologies and uh, justifications of our ulama, maraja, uh, different from Sayyid al khuyi at different ways. Sayyid al-Sistani, uh, as, as I mentioned, he's rejected all the methodologies and of the other maraja. And he said on the basis of obligatory precaution, avoid. Only one methodology he had allowed that I come I want a loan from you. You are a private uh, sector bank, so I want a loan from you. So what you are going to tell me that I'm going to uh, sell you the loan money. So how can you sell me the loan money? That means you are going to sell me 1,000 pounds that I return it uh, $1,500, which is equivalent to 1,100 pounds. So there is interest, but that, that is the profit of my sale. So I'm selling you. So it's not loan, it's buying and selling. There are some buying and selling agreements which get involved with uh, uh, unlawful low, uh, interest as well. But this uh, selling the currency is purely okay if I sell you in a higher price um, uh, at my currency. So, so I'm selling you 1,000 pound for $1,500. So you give me back after two months, $1,500, okay? Even if you then give me back 1,100 pound, say this is says, okay, as long as the agreement was done, the agreement, the contract was done on two different currencies. Now I'm going to bring you 1,500. You are the banker, you tell me, Bana, just give me the pounds and let me get, uh, don't put me in the hassle. So I will give you pound, equivalent to $1,500, which, which is 1,100 pound. So 100 extra pound is embedded, included in this 1,500 because it was calculated from the beginning that I'm going to, uh, he is going to charge me extra uh, money for the money he's selling. This is the only thing which Sayyidi Sistani Damadullah uh, gives the permission uh, to do so. And that's what I, why, why I kept it in red. All the other issues, I say this is Daniel's problem. This is again private bank. So, uh, so then uh, here, say this is Daniel gives another um, example, which if there is no condition, it is permissible. Again, this is the private bank, <clears throat> which can be applicable to any other bank, but those other two banks, like non governmental banks and Islam, non Islamic bank, they are easily solvable. So uh, so before uh, I mentioned this ruling, so what is the e easiness in that? First of all, we said that governmental banks in Islamic country are majhul al-malik, unknown owner. So who's the authority for us as Shia, followers of Ahl al-Bayt, school of Ahl al-Bayt, in this time of occultation, how can we deal and manage the, the wealth of which we don't know who is the owner of? We have to consult our marja which uh, in majority of the case where we are studying these masail, those people are following these sessions, is Ayatollah al-Uqma, Sayyid Ali Sistani Damadullah. So Sayyid Ali Sistani Damadullah, he says, I have given my followers permission to, get, uh, to, to, to take over the loan money on my behalf, which I am the authority on behalf of Majhul al-Malik. So basically he is telling you to use this money Okay, then if they take interest, then it will be uh, under pressure. Then you, you, you don't have any other choice. But the, the, it, there is no loan agreement. It is called al istila, taking over, using the amwal al majhul al malik. The, and then you're going to return amwal al majhul al malik back. That means you're going to return it to Sayyidi Sistani Damadullah. So it's taking from Sayyidi Sistani, giving it back. The in between people, the brokers, which is the bank, 
Now th that bank is going to charge you interest. <laughs> it's, 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 I don't care about say this is Tani, your marja. So unless if it was a Shia guy, you see, then he will understand. I, I'm going to charge you interest, whatever. Uh, so basically that you have to do, you have to do. So because as long as there is no loan agreement, that interest you can consider the service charges you can cut because it is not under loan agreement there is no loan agreement so there there is no uh, unlawful interest involved in it okay so this is a justification which is made uh, for the amwal majhul al malik governmental banks uh, or combo governmental banks okay so so the government plus private shareholders are there in it so this is Alhamdulillah solved, taking loan from governmental banks. And as I mentioned previously, don't take unless you really need it. Don't put yourself, oh, I was majboor and they're taking, taking money from me. So try to take it if you really need it to buy a house for the necessities of life, not to go Spain or, uh, or travel to Bangkok or uh, I don't know where, Disneyland here and there. Not that. No, take for really something. Yes, you will not die if you not get a car. You will not die if you are not had a house. But it's some of the necessities of life instead of paying five thousand pounds rent, for example, or five five hundred pounds rent to a rent of the house. You pay five hundred pounds here, so at least this will be your ownership. So intellectually, you will not be wasting money. Instead of rent, you will be paying this, uh, which is so-called interest, which is not interest, uh, unlawful interest, because it is shara'an, relig religiously, it's not a loan agreement. Uh, how can we say religiously it's not a loan agreement? If you remember, I gave you example. There, there are religious consideration, okay? There are religious consideration where, uh, where, where Islamic legislative system might differ with civil law might differ with civil civil system in certain areas, in certain uh, uh, issues. For example, uh, uh, um, uh, in, in many European countries, it is known that if you go uh, to the court, get a certificate that you are living together, you are husband and wife, okay? So nobody will uh, question you, nothing. You are husband and wife. But Islam does not look at it like that because you did not make a religious contract. So that's why you are haram on each other. But civil, commonly, it is okay, yes. But Islamic considerations are a bit different. So what does that mean? That means the child which they will have uh, without having marriage contract will be considered Islamically, according to Islam, illegitimate child, okay? He will not be inheriting his father. There will be rules of uh, uh, maharim issues are going to be affected. All these kind of rules are like connected with this kind of legitimacy of the, of the relation and legitimacy of the children religious legitimacy. But then um, uh, on the civil law, they say it's okay. But once you say, as a watch to see al al mar al malum the wife says, and the guy says, Qabil, finish, just this. In, the same thing I mentioned about the intention. Many times when you slaughter a goat, you slaughter a goat and you don't say, Bismillah, Allah, but intentionally. It is mita, it is nudges. But when you say, Bismillah, Allah, but, so this Bismillah, Allah, but makes haram thing halal. Okay, kalma makes a, a kafir Muslim. So these are small, small considerations, but in Islam, they play a major role in Islamic legal system. So therefore, yes, if, if, if they will say, I, 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 hold your ear from here or from here, it's same thing. No, it's not same thing. If this one is a different route and this one is different route. Yes, the year is same. You got the money of loan, but you used a different route, which is a permissible route. Like this, let's consider this route permissible, holding from front. Holding from behind, that is impermissible route. Uh, route. So yes, the route's methodology might differ. You might get at the end of the day, same results. The, the goat has been slaughtered, but one is dead, one is halal, just because Bismillah wallah. The relation is a relation. The community considers them husband and wife, but you have not recited that. So it is an illegitimate relation out of wedlock. So this is the thing that when, when our maraja, they do this justification, they're trying to find out, is there something in the Quran? Is there something in the hadith of Ahlul Bayt to ju justify these things? So say this is an idam of Allah justifies it as a buying and selling. So we had like uh, several ways of justification. We say this is Tani said that obligatory precaution. No, leave those ways. The only way was that uh, uh, change of currency 
even in the at the end of the day you are going to return a pound but it will be equivalent to one thousand five hundred dollars okay but it's pound yes but the agreement was not in pounds. i gave him the pounds because uh, it's, it's useful for him to get pounds so i changed the dollars into pounds okay and give it to him whatever was agreed upon so now here this is uh, the final method uh, how uh, cd sistani mentions justification of the loan so this is a third person issue like financing agencies you see banks uh, like um, uh, if there's a third person here so remember this third person solves quite a problem why you want to buy a house okay let's say this is a house you want to buy this house this house is 100000 pounds i am a bank banker you you can't buy this house it's too much for you so i will buy this house for 100000 cash and i will make an agreement with you on installments but i will give you for 120000 pounds so that will 20000 will be my uh, this broker charges okay it will it will not be considered interest it will be considered here i'm a i'm a i'm a third person involved and i have purchased it okay how can you say it is uh, uh, it is like okay because bank is selling you i am buying it from that person no who is paying that person bank is paying that person you are not paying even if you got the money from the bank and paid him but the bank is going to put the lien on your property you are not allowed to sell it you are not allowed to do whatever without the permission of the bank and consent of the bank and the the involvement of the bank because bank is your partner in the beginning you have paid down payment 20000 100000 was paid by the bank so bank has 80% of the of or, or majority of the shares so the bank mm -hmm. has been on it that means the bank is the owner now you are not mm -hmm. owner mm -hmm. please try to uh, use your uh, yes we don't want to hear secrets uh, private secrets of the families so please try to make sure that your uh, your uh, microphones are mute unless if we you have a question that's something else okay perfect so now again let me come back to you because it's it's a very uh, technical issue i want you to pay focus so i want a house no I, i'm the bank you want a house you want a house from the seller the seller is selling 100000 you don't have money i buy the house and i sell it to you 120000 on installments this is permissible as long as there was no condition in a way we are going to explain so this concept is okay third person car you want to buy a car you want to finance it so there's a third person involved the involved the finance and age financing agency the financing agency they buy the car and they sell it to you on a higher price so here let's see what say this is tani says wa minha so that we will know what is the what is the condition we say this is tani is intending wa minha an yabi al bank bidaa bi mablagh 120 dinar as i said bank sells you uh, the bank sells a product let's say house for 120000 pounds مثلا for example ثم يشتريها المشتري then the seller takes from you which is you okay you are the seller and the bank so i purchase the house okay i purchase the house, but before i purchase the house i made the you are the buyer sorry i made an agreement with you see i'm going to sell this house for 120000 because it's 100000 but i'm going to buy it for you and you can pay me in installments so i go and buy the house from the seller for 100000 and i then sell it to you so this is the first paragraph wa hada aidan la yasuh okay this is also not permissible how idha ishtarata fi al bay' al awwal qiyam al bank bi shira al bidaa naqdan bil aqal min thamani nasiatan walaw bi iqa' al aqd mabniyan ala dhalik so nasiya means installment so you are not allowed to do this kind of sale bay' al awwal that means i'm selling you something which if you buy from me directly i'll give you 100000 if you buy, uh, get it from uh, in installments 120000 so th there is uh, there is no this is not a contract so this is not permissible why because there is a 
in assurity, un, uh, uh, uncertainty, uncertainty. Okay, so what this or this? So if you have decided, no, I am going to buy the house in installments with this amount, then yes, it is permissible. But you buy an option that whenever I'm late, uh, you can charge me interest. That is not permissible. That is something which is vague. In Islamic, everything needs to be clear. So if everything is clear that I am going to buy the house in installments, this much money I'll pay. And there's no condition. Okay, if you delay, I'll charge you extra. If you bring me earlier, I will drop down the money. That's not right. That if if that if you the more you delay, the more I charge. That is not going to be uh, accepted. That's not me. so. Make sure that if you get a house, don't delay and don't. Uh, I mean, if you want to pay earlier to get rid of this interest, that's something else. There are ways to do, but don't delay because the the banker they want to charge you the more you delay. So here he says that the condition that if you delay, the more I'll charge you. Okay. If you bring it earlier, I will I will uh, drop down uh, uh, some of knock down some of the interest. So he says, "Well, لا يصح إذا اشترط في البيع الأول." From the beginning, from the beginning, from the here, what did he say in the beginning? Uh, I'm going to sell you the house for one hundred thousand twenty thousand in installments, fixed installments. Okay. Uh, so now here, no. If you say, if you are going to bring uh, bring me money earlier, I will bring it down. You can't, if the, if the contract is based on this, if and if and if you bring and if you not bring, then he says that this is uh, uh, problematic. This is problematic. From the beginning of the contract, you make these two deals. من ثمانية نسيئة ولو بإيقاع العقد مبنيا على ذلك. so let's say the bank by itself does that kind of contract, the بيع الأول. so that is not permissible. so the bank should buy it نقدا. okay. Uh, not the bank should not say okay I'm buying it for less than uh, if I I buy for uh, if I delay I will uh, pay you extra. that also bank should not be doing from the first. And then this condition should not be presented to the seller. I mean, to the buyer. Sorry, to the buyer. So this is what I have ma made in that. These are the words of Ayatollah Sistani in the contemporary laws. This is what he, he clarifies this condition here. Because here, the, this condition which I mentioned is not clear. If you don't make that condition of hesitation, the more, the more, the, the then he, he says that if that condition is not there, it is okay then there's no problem. Fixed installment, fixed price, delay, uh, fixed delay, everything. He says all these methodology, uh, he says that if these are okay, this, the bank has a plan. The bank has the more you delay, the more I charge, charge you more. The bank, because the methodology is mentioned by Sayyid al-Khu'i that I'll sell you a pen with 10 pounds extra. That 10 pounds is actually interest. Sayyid al-Khu'i was trying to change also uh, into a, a sale contract rather than a loan contract. Okay, purchase con sale contract. The bank makes a sale, sale contract rather than, and he in, the bank increases the price of this pen, which is $100, $120, okay? So that $20 is basically not the interest of the pen, that is of the loan. But as I said, two contracts are separated, like Majul al Malik. Remember, Majul al Malik, Sayyidi Sisani tells you, use the money, and the, so there's no loan contract. When, when they charge you interests, just consider service fees, whatever. So, so when you separate this loan from, uh, from the interest, and the interest is kept in a separate contract, like the selling the spend contract. Then Sayyid al said, but Sayyid al-Sistani said, these are not, uh, not okay. Why? The bank will not say, I will, if you delay one more month, I will sell you this pen for 140. They do not, it is, it is not practical. It is not applicable here. Unless if we said the whole banking system was following the marji'i of Sayyid al-Sistani, then these things are applicable. But that is not practical, practical, okay? So here, he says that, what is the aim of the bank? The right to demand 
the one who has taken the debt. بمبلغ زائد extra money لو تأخر عن أداء دينه عند نهاية الأجل. If he delays the payment uh, at the end of the uh, period, at the end of the term of the loan. So you did not pay. Okay, I pay extra. This is what say the stands is. This is if you say that the more you delay, the more I'll charge you extra. That kind of condition is not acceptable. Uh, in which I'm still talking about Muslim banks. Okay, Muslim banking system, uh, which is private sector, not Majul al Malik, not non-Muslim. Okay, so <clears throat> uh, so he says, uh, The more you delay, the more it's extra. This is the core concept. If you understand this, you will understand the whole idea of installments and mortgage. The whole idea is taking extra. Who's going to take extra? You, you are forced to give, but the bank is going to take extra. Let's say you were under tough circumstances and Allah knows that you are not able to pay. So inshallah, you will not have that burden Okay, but the bank, who is a Muslim bank, they will charge you. They are going to take the burden of taking extra on delay. They need to understand your circumstances. Yes, you cannot say you went to Spain and you went to enjoy here and there. And then you say, oh, I'm in tough circumstances. I can't pay. Why did you go then? Just, so that is the issue here. So, so taking interest. Um, um, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a coverage or as a so in compensation for the delay, muharram. It is from the riba, unlawful usury, unlawful interest. It doesn't matter. Even this was in a sale contract. Remember, we said that sale is more, more safer. But with this kind of condition, even in the sale contract, it's not, not, not acceptable. So this is a nutshell, the condition that the more you delay, the more I'll charge you. That is the, 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 the most horrible part in these kind of installment sales and mortgages. But if there's a fixed mortgage, that's fine. If there's a fixed installment, that's fine. You agreed, your, your contract was, I'm selling you, uh, this uh, one uh, per month, you will give me 1,800 uh, uh, kroners, okay? Uh, fine, there is extra in it, but no. The, the whole sale is that for me, I'm paying you the, the cost of the car. Inside it, it's your interest, it's your fiber, whatever, it's fixed. So this fixed kind of installments are okay. But no, if you delay one installment, then I'll charge you. You should not, if you are a Muslim banker, you should not ask for that extra. So this is what Sayyidi Sistani wanted to mention. So remember, if, uh, there's a, there are two different things. You get a loan from the bank and buy house. That is totally different. You buy the house through the bank as a financing agency or buy a car through the bank. That is this ruling. You see, because there's a third person involved. But when you take a money, when you loan money or when you borrow money from the bank, and the bank tells you, we are going to charge you this. That is totally one and one person. There's no third person. That is serious problem, especially when we come to Muslim Institute, Islamic Institute. But, but as I said, non-Muslim banks, Majul al-Malik, which I'm going to talk now, uh, they are much easier. So, so Muslim private sector, if they charge you interest and conditional interest, give you one person loan, no. But if you buy something from Muslim bank, on an extra, on installment, like mortgage, car on installment, that is okay as long as there is no, you don't delay your installments in a way that they will charge you extra. And if God forbid, if you are in circumstances and they are Muslim institute and they will force you to pay extra, then according to Ayatollah Sistani Damadullah, that is forbidden. If you have not understood, review, go back and listen five, six times and follow the text because that's why I keep the text of Ayatollah Sistani there so that people, they know that yeah, whatever I have spoken, I have spoken from the words of Ayatollah Sistani because many times explanations, uh, they get con people, they get confused from ex different explanations. Okay, now we come to the governmental bank. Sweet, as they say, sweet Jesus. <laughs> so what about governmental bank? So now we are done with private sector, which is a very dangerous zone. We come to the governmental bank. He says, 
Majul al Malik. So it is not going to be a loan agreement. You are going to come to me. I am going to tell you, okay, just take it, use it for halal things, don't use it for haram things. So Ayatollah Sistani has given the permission. He says that I have given the permission in, the, in this law, he says, I have given the permission to our followers to take the loan from the governmental, Muslim governmental bank as a taking over, uh, um, um, securing the wealth of uh, unknown owner, which is under the permission of the marja, and then you have to return it. Uh, so basically you're taking the card from the marja and the bank is charging you interest. So it's what, on what it's charging interest, the money you have taken from Sayyidi Sistani, that means it is their service charges, service fees, whatever, whatever, it, it's disconnected from the loan contract. Okay, like the pen, you see, pen 150. So this is one of the, the, the things where for non-Islamic bank, non-government, non-Islamic, like governmental banks, governmental Islamic banks, they separate loan from Sayyidi Sistani Damadullah and uh, bank service charges, whatever they are doing. So you can make any other intentions to give them whatever they charge. And as I said, try not to uh, uh, take these things unless if you really would like to have it for some basic necessities of life, not extreme, but basic also. <clears throat> like, uh, so he says, ruling number two, la yajuzu. Okay, let's me see the time. Yes, we have some time. So we, let's take two rulings. Let's clear this uh, loan issue. And next week, we are going to talk about, inshallah, saving the money in the bank. It is not permissible to take loan from the governmental banks. But you said we can. Yeah, this is initial. Ayatollah Sistan says initial. You cannot take it with the intention of taking loan from the bank. No. From Majhul Ilman, from Sidi Sistan, yes. So he's, we are just at the beginning. So calm down and let me finish the ruling first, okay? La yajuzu al-iqtiraab. It is not permissible to take the loan. Min al-bunuk al From the hukumam is government, from the governmental bank. Bisharti daf'i ziyada li annahu riban. With the condition of paying extra, because it is riba, it is in unlawful usury. It does not make any difference whether you're uh, taking the loan was by keeping something, what they say, I forgot the English name for it, uh, like uh, girvi, we say girvi in Urdu language, rahan uh, in uh, Arabic, that means uh, I want a loan, I'll, I'll want a loan, I'll keep this phone with you. If I don't return the loan, I'll to take away. I forgot the English name. Anyhow, you understood now. So uh, if somebody knows the English name, you can jump in and let me know. Sheikhna, what is the English name of this Girvi or? Um, I can only think of the Swedish name right now. The Swedish name is Borian. Um, Borian. It's like something you keep in hostage, basically. Yes, yes, yes. yes. So uh, secu you... Security, security Secu is the word. Exactly, guarantee, guarantee security. Thank you, Sheikhna, thank you. So, so basically, uh, even if there was guarantee, doesn't make any difference. With the guarantee, with the with the security, or without the security. Yes, uh, Asif Bai, do you have a name for this? In English, I forgot it. Okay. I think it's security. Huh? Collateral, maybe collateral security, a guarantee, something you keep. So, as a collateral for your loan, you don't pay off. Uh, you have to. Uh, they, the bank will take it over. Then, then you you don't have anything. So, so it was with with this collateral, with this uh, security, or without it. If he takes the loan with that intention, the condition will be invalid. What does that mean? That means you're not committed. However, if you don't give them, they'll put you in a slammer. So, but in Ayatollah who used to say inside your heart, say, if let's say they forgot to take one install or one day, one day, don't go and donate. Ah, this is my commitment and this is my condition. So don't commit from your heart, even though they will not forget to take this. But if, if let's say Mojiza happens and miracle happens, and if they forget, no, because you can't commit to this. 
that's why we say you have taken the loan not as an option because you needed to buy a house, you needed to buy a car, even if you were, you would not die. But still, these things are nowadays some things which are necessary. Even the, the necessaries are not extreme, but they are considered unlike traveling here and there. So here, if he does the qard in this way, the loan is invalid and the condition is invalid. Even if the even if there is no interest in the agreement extra, the, the, the loan, original loan is invalid, he said. Why? Bank does not own. The bank is just a representative of the community. It's a national bank, it's a state bank. People they have given tax. This is tax money, people's money. Who are these people? They're unknown. So that's why it is unknown owner. So how can a bank make a loan agreement on behalf of owners who have not given their representation to the bank clear to get, do this kind of loan agreement? We are talking about Muslim country, Islamic government. Okay? So the bank is not owning. How can the bank allow other people to own this? The bank is representing to save their money to secure their money. But many of them, they might not be happy. It's a Muslim community, Muslim bank. They might not be happy that the bank is using our money in haram, in waging war with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as in Quran. Okay, Sayyidina, now we know khalas, it is not permissible. So what is the way? He says, well, it tahallus to get relief, to escape from this haram thing. من ذلك and this complication of مجهول المالك يجوز للشخص أن يقبض المال to 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 hold the money to secure the money to, from the bank لا بقصد الاقتراض not with the intention of قرض الربوي not the intention of, of interest unlawful interest loan so what should we do you take it refer to your marja refer to your religious authority ويرجع فيه إلى الحاكم الشرعي and in this, how to, how, in what kind of justification you can take this money, use it, uh, refer to your religious authority. And here, say this is his word, his permi private permission is here. Waqad adinna, and we have verily given permission. To who? Lil mu'mineen, to the mu'mineen. Mimman yaqbadhu kadalika. Whoever takes it, secures this money, okay, we have given them permission. Those who follow me, I'm, I've given this permission. And if, say this, if you take this as, as a hukme, uh, hukme hakim, then for anyone, even if somebody doesn't follow Sayyidi Sistani, he can consider Sayyidi Sistani as a ju judiciary authority, a judge, and he's given permission. Because he says, lil mu'mineen, to the believers, not to muqallideen. So all the believers, okay, this is inclusive. Otherwise, sometimes before the issues, وَقَدْ أَذِنَّا لِمُقَلِّدِينَ Our مُقَلِّدِينَ So even if somebody does not follow Sayyidi Sistani, apparently this sentence gives the uh, authoritativeness of Sayyidi Sistani on the mu'mineen. وَقَدْ أَذِنَّا We have given the permission to the mu'mineen. مِمَّنْ يَقْبَضُهُ Whoever secures it. كَذَلِكَ بِالتَّصَرُفُ So securing is permitted and using it permitted. As long as it's halal, don't say Ayatollah Sistani Mane Raja IP chain Uto na halal things. Bit tasarufi. Wifkama had huddi the lahu minal masarif il mashrua permissible at the disposal or permissible usage. So whatever use you are going to do, it is going to be permissible. And there are two ways, say this is that dimensions. Allah ahadil wajhain. We say take this two wajhain. And um, then we will uh, continue next week. Imma bi an yatamallakahu min ghairi zaman. He takes it without any guarantee, without any collateral, without any security. Walakin ma adalika leisa lahu imtina an daf ima yuadilhu ila al bank ma lam yuskhtu anhu. So he cannot refrain from from giving. He should not refrain from giving the bank whatever bank is demanding. Give me back, give me back, big give me back. As long as the bank does not drop, and which bank is going to drop this uh, the, this thing, okay? Either the interest or either. 
اما بان يتملك من غير ضمان هي تيكس ات ويزاوت جارنتي ولكن مع ذلك even though he takes it without putting any guarantee any collateral any thing laysa lahu al imtina he should not refrain he should not uh, uh, prevent himself an daf'i ma yu'adilhu okay whatever you took you pay equivalent to it back to the bank as long as the bank do, will not drop it so the bank is not going to drop it they're going to take penny penny back <laughs> more so this is number one that this is intention you make the intention inside okay otherwise bank is not going to drop but you can make your intention if the bank is not going to ask me i'm not obligated to pay him because he did not take the loan from the bank he took from as permission from say this is to secure the money which majul al malik to use it and give it back if they demand wa imma bi an yahtasibu qardan ala nafsi min ghayri ziyada or he can consider he took the money loan on behalf of say this is tani from the bank but without the extra okay so this is also intention remember the two go- two guys got married in the court and then two guys got to the watch to ankahto these are the consideration your intention be and so you you consider this qard upon yourself that you are taking loan okay from the bank with the permission of but the the, the extra part is not part because say this is and tells you okay the loan is okay the extra part is not okay min ghayri ziyada wa yakfi inda idhn in this case it is sufficient to give back the money wafa'uhu lil bank dhata so give back the money to the bank itself you took from the bank you give it back to the bank but you have the permission of say this is tani to take it and to give it but no permission for on that interest so that uh, that the the condition of interest is invalid wa tubra dhimmatu bi dhalik and you he, that person will be relieved just by giving it back to the bank the majhul al malik which he took then he will uh, be relieved from the liability uh, religious liability wa la yadurruhu ala so in these two cases either he takes it without any guarantee of giving it back okay even though he gives it back uh, when the bank asks he has to give it back he said no 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 say this is tan says no this is mine no no don't get say this is tan into trouble he's trying to help you justify uh, religiously how he's trying to help you no 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 say this is tan he says i i don't have to give it back to you so there is no guarantee that i'll give it back okay even there's no collateral there's nothing there which makes you obligated to give it back religiously but yes legally uh, civil law you have to give it back so this is one another one is no take it as a loan say this is not truly take loan don't commit to the condition so here the condition is not committed in the in the in the first one this one take it there the whole thing is not guaranteed here the loan is guaranteed to be returned but the condition no so he says in both cases wala yadhru al al wajhain in both cases both scenarios there is no harm if he knows that the bank is going to force him to pay the extra okay wala yadhru al 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 wajhain al ilm bi anna al bank sawfa yulzimuhu ilzam they are going to put, give put, put you put bring police uh, until they take the bunny out of your throat yulzimu bi daf' al ziyada paying extra even you know that you, they are going to take that's fine he said say this is tani said i have i have the authority on majul al malik i've separated it so that thing i don't care about whatever happens you can, whatever intention you want service charges this charges whatever charges the like so many of the scholars they say that i'm not in, 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 in responsible i am responsible to help you secure the money and then you can give it back the money to them falaw talabahu biha jaza lahu daf'a so let's say bank says uh, i we need our money we need our int- we need the interest so it is permissible for you to give i'm saying he will have to give here otherwise you'll be in jail or you'll be in trouble so he says don't feel that oh i'm going to commit haram if i give he says no no you will not commit haram because we have separated loan agreement from this money so you can give them the condition is invalid now bank wants extra money give them extra money with whatever intention uh, it is permissible for you to give the money 
And inshallah, next week uh, we are going to take ruling number three. But uh, those who are um, might have curiosity about non-Islamic bank, let me tell you the basic ruling of non taking loan from non-Islamic bank. Non-Islamic bank, see, governmental bank, we said, Aghasistani, you are the authority. We want, he said, I have given you, don't write me letters. Uh, I will have like millions of letters. Everybody is demand, asking card and permission. I have given general permission to the mu'mineen. So if you are qualified as from the believers, followers of Ahlul Bayt, you have the permission of Ayatul Sistani, even if you don't do taqlid. So that is taken care of, governmental bank or combo governmental bank. Non-Islamic bank, is easy. He says istila, the anwan al istila. Now this might have some negative connotations, some positive connotations. Let's keep it a respectful, uh, respectful uh, way, methodology, because we have to respect the the community. Some people, some people, you know, that they have this negative mindset, so they take it as a negative thing. No, we will take it as a positive. So what is this istila? The bank. It is a non-Islamic bank. Are they Muslims? No, they're not Muslims. Are they following Quran? No. Are they following Hadith? No. Are they following Ayatollah al Adma Sayyidi Sistani? No. So, so, so they, these laws are not applicable to non Muslims in the first place. Haram to me, but not haram to them. Okay, so what should I do? So, what should Sayyidi Sistani say? They're providing wealth to you to use. Don't take it as an intention of qard. Again, the same thing. Intention of qard is sensitive. So what intention? Take, they are providing. It's mubah, permissible. They are consent. See, you, we are going to give you a loan for your house. Okay, take it. Just take it because it's provided to be used. Okay. Now what happens if they ask me? You have to give it back. You can't say, no, it was not loan. Yes, religiously, it was not loan. Remember that two guys getting married in the court and getting married in the in front of Islamic uh, Qadi or Sheikh or something like that? So same thing. So, so, so religiously, it is not a loan. If you take money from non-Islamic bank, because they don't, they don't have the rules of loan which are practiced to, uh, in front of Ayatollah al Sayyid Sayyidi Sistani. How can we consider that loan? So Majul al-Malik, the issue was, who is the owner? Here we know who are the owners, but are they Muslims to practice Islamic laws? No, you can't obligate them. Okay, Mr. Banker, Mr. John, uh, sell me your pen for $100 pen for one. You cannot do that. He's a get out. If you'll not go out, they'll bring the police or maybe a mental institute uh, people to take you, drag you there. So no, no they, it's not applicable to them. So what's up, what, how can we do that? They are giving you money. Take it, use it. So khalas for me, obviously they're giving you. But when they ask you, give us back, give it back to them. So there's no loan agreement. It's they are providing you some kind of services. That's what we consider Islamically because there's no loan agreement. We can't have a loan agreement with conditional interest. So they, they say, we are going to charge you. Okay, charge whatever you want to charge. But for me, inside myself, I'm not making a loan agreement. I'm signing, I'm getting some money to use. And when you want this money, I'll give it back to you. So this is as simple as I can. It is more deep, uh, there's deep philosophy behind it. But to, to um, general public, it is enough for them to know that you can have you can use the money provided to you by their consent, the bankers, non-Muslims, they're trying to help uh, uh, help the, the you. So Alhamdulillah, be thankful to them. Tell them, thank you so much, take it, use it. And they say, give it back, you have to give it back. That's how you can keep it, okay? But there's no loan agreement. And then what about the interest they are going to charge? Same like Majul al-Malik. Consider it uh, for service charge, fees charge, whatever charge, because it's not loan agreement, religious loan agreement from the beginning. The intention is not religious loan. The intention is religiously you're taking money to use it. Okay, so that is what we wanted to discuss today. Next week, inshallah, we will continue uh, ruling number two. I hope everything is understood. If not, then welcome to ask questions. <laughs> Yes, my dear.